Hello everybody, welcome back uh, to our Revit um, 2016. Alrighty ho, so in the um, last video um, I ran a couple of um, sections through, so if I have a look at my ground floor plan, there you go, there's a section there, there's a section marker there, so we're talking about the sections etc, and then it was time to um, try and figure out what to do with these sections. Okay, so, uh, so let's see if we can grab this section here and I, because I've stretched it up here, we've split it, I can drag that one there because I don't really want to cut through a, um, a fridge. Okay, and I'll go back to section one. Okay, so what the sections do is they start highlighting um, obviously a few little issues. Okay, so here's one issue, this is the cut plane, it looks a little bit bizarre. Um, but of real importance that I've seen right here is this little area here at the bottom. Now if you've watched my previous videos, um, when we were looking at, um, when we did the kitchen joinery and we put these elements down, in the ground floor plan we were just seeing we, all the joinery or the casework underneath was visible. So I thought, ah, oh, well we need to offset this by 900, get it off the ground floor plan, ground floor level. And it turns out this is not quite right, so we've really made a little bit of a stuff up and we need to try and resolve this. Okay, so we're going to introduce you to something called um, Revit's version of layer control. Okay, and how do we hide things from views and, and etc. Okay, so, but the first thing we need to do is we need to get these elements down here. Okay, it's a fairly simple process. So let's just start. There's, we've got a kitchen bench there. There's the countertop. So I'm just going to left click on that and I'm going to have a look over to the left hand side in my properties. Okay, and there we have in there we have the offset. Okay, now at the moment it's 900 and I'm guessing that that 900 is actually offset from this level here which is already 900. So let's be logical, let's see if we can just change that offset there to zero, we'll delete that and apply, there we go, that looks a bit more accurate, okay, so we can apply that to these two elements here, so um, if you use the AutoCAD we can do the whole, uh, like if I select from right to left I can pick up every element underneath that catch, uh, underneath that window, so I can, there's a couple of elements in there, so I can click on that, and apply, okay, and change the offset there. Okay, so that's starting, that looks a bit more accurate. Okay, that, well, it's not a bit more accurate, it's completely accurate. Okay, now let's go back to our ground floor plan, have a quick look at this. Okay, and there's that mess that we were talking about. Now this countertop is not glass, so we should not be seeing these casework elements underneath, okay, and that's the, th this is the irritating part about what we're trying to deal with. So, what we're going to do here is, is, rather than, we needed that section to be accurate, so this view is not 100% correct, okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to show you how to hide elements within Revit so that they're not visible within the view, okay, and I'm just going to start by clicking on one of these little casement pieces here, so here we are, we've got a casework um, base cabinet, oh, come back here, yeah. there it is, left click, grab it, okay, alright, now, key thing about Revit is that it doesn't have layers as most drafties are used to, so AutoCAD, ArchiCAD, Vectorworks and things like that, uh, MicroStation all operate on layers. Okay, so you have, you know, somewhere in the software you have this big, uh, you know, you have a section there with, you know, helps you control layers and you have freeze layers and turn them on and off and thaw and all that sort of stuff. And we don't strictly have that with Revit. There are no layers. Okay, everything's sorted out by families, um, etc., and groups. So, what we can do though is we can turn off 
things and turn the visibility off within a view. So this is what we're going to do here. So I've highlighted this particular piece of casework. Okay, and if I right click in the screen, I get a little pop-up menu. And in here there is something called hide in view. Okay, so here I can go and we have elements category or by filter. But we'll keep it simple and we'll just deal with these top two. So the hide in view elements, okay, is whatever has been selected in this view, you will hide it. Okay, so with this one here I've only selected one bit of casework. So if I go hide in view elements left click, it's disappeared. Okay. If I was to click another piece of casework, and let's just say for argument's sake, uh, use my control key to do a multi-select. Okay, I pick two elements there. And if I go right click, hide in view, elements, both the text box and that piece of casework will disappear because they were the selected elements. Okay, so I'm just going to undo that little that particular function because I don't want to lose my text. Okay, so again, click on the element that you want, right click, hide in view elements. The short key for that one, if I click on the element, is EH. So EH, done, hide from view. Okay, now that was hide the elements. Now what I can do is I can hide the whole category. So I'm going to click on one of these bits of casework, and we've got one, two, there's about five left there. Okay, right click, hide and view, category. You watch what happens. Ooh, okay. Not quite the result I was after. Okay, it's hidden everything with regards to that category, which included all the bench tops, which I did not want. I need those. So, Control Z, undo. Okay, so what we have to do is I have to go through and select all of these bits of casework. So I'm going to go hold my control key down, there's my little plus symbol, and do a bit of zooming in. And pick all of those elements, right click, hide and view, elements. Okay, so what that does is that's cleaned up the kitchen a lot for us, and that's roughly what we would expect to see. Okay, we might see some overhead dotted lines for overhead cupboards or whatever, but we don't have them right now. Okay, but that's the bones of it. Now, we've done our little magic trick, which is make our elements disappear. Now, how do I get them back? Okay, so follow the cursor all the way down here into our visual controls. Okay, and you will see in there a little light bulb. Okay, and that is the reveal hidden elements. And for those that uh, for anybody used to anybody used to AutoCAD, it sort of looks like you know turn layer on button, okay icon. So look, just left left click that little light bulb. We get this sort of like deep red, deep pink uh, border, okay. Anything um, most of it is grayed out except for the anything that is um, hidden. So if it's hidden, it will actually light up as red. Okay, so it sort of helps us identify which parts are, are hidden and which aren't. Okay, so if I can click on that element there, okay, and on the top of the ribbon here it says unhide element, so I can bring it back into my project. Okay, now if I had said unhide hidden these by category only, then when I click on that, oops. Bear with me. There we go. If this had been hidden as a category, we would only have to be able to unhide it as a category. Okay, so it's a little differentiation there. So just we'll get a bit of practice with this one here. Okay, but that is about as close as Revit gets to version, um, layer control. Okay, so I'm just going to click that left, um, that little light, light bulb icon again. Okay. And there, there is another little bit of um, layer control that we have here, or, you know, looking at things. Okay, and that is um, temporary hide and isolate. So again, follow my cursor. Next to the light bulb, we've got these little glasses. Okay, and in here, we can isolate elements and, and categories. So it's sort of like the opposite of the hiding things. Instead of hiding one thing, we isolate it. So, 
this is probably a little bit going to be a little bit better if we go into the 3D mode. Okay, and let's just say for example we want to isolate doors. Okay, I have no reason why we would do that, but let's say we will. So what I do is I click on a door, I go to my little glasses there, the temporary height and isolate, click on that, and I can isolate the category. So let's left click on that. And there we go. So in the model, only the doors or the door category was isolated. Okay, so that would make life a lot easier because I can actually go to all these doors now and muck around with them without having to cut through all the mess of the rest of the building. Okay, so we get this light blue line here. Okay, now what I'm going to do there is just go back to my light, my little glasses there, and reset. Done. Okay, and that brings it back. Righty ho. So that is the lesson there. Okay, so we're almost going to go a little bit ad hoc now because as I see things within the section we need to look at them and, and fix them up um, and we'll find a range of different things to um, talk about and fix up so anyway we will see you later and uh, yeah come back soon